Making people care about issues is very much uh, your mm. your job, but <laughs> Laurie Goering, at, uh, as, as a journalist with, with, with Thomson Reuters, I mean, and, and you mentioned, in fact, when we were, when we were talking earlier, this how you think sometimes issues of security are being recruited to, to, to get people in more involved. You think that's the case? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it, it's a thing that, that just immediately puts it up the agenda. I mean, I, th I think as as Tom was saying, that you, you really have to find ways to speak to people about things that they understand and that affect them. I, I find increasingly, I'm an American, you know the issues in, in the United States around this, that you, you say climate change and immediately you know, half of your audience is waving their hands and backing out of the room. So uh, we, I find, for instance, that if you talk to an American about why they can't get flood insurance or they can't afford that anymore, or why their kids have got a problem with, with uh, asthma, because of increasing pollen or something like that. And, and, and you know, you don't make climate change the first thing you talk about. You know, th that's helpful. And, and it's the same on the ground. Uh, we run a big string of reporters in out various parts of the developing world that write about this. And we are saying, no one ever says climate change is the cause of my problem. But people, people do say floods are the cause of my problem. Crop failure is the cause of my problem. Um, you know, th that the rains never come at the right time anymore <laughs> is the cause of my problem. You know, that, that is climate change. It's just, just a different way of saying it. So on security, yeah, I mean, I think that, that there's been a real temptation by lots and lots of people to push that forward because it's a way of, of getting attention. And, you know, in some parts of the world, it is actually a security concern already. I mean, I would argue that for China, climate change is a security issue. And that is why they are paying more attention to it and doing more in some ways than other parts of the world, because they have a government that doesn't expect that it will be gone in four or five years. Uh, they have a government that sees a long term ahead of you know, 10, 20 years in office. And, and, and these time frames are within the time they're going to be there. So, so they do see it as a security concern, I think some other places as well. We've heard a lot ar around this table about the complexity of this issue and you need to consider this and you need to consider that. It's certainly not about technology, it's also about politics as well. As a journalist working in this area, what problems does that give you? Well, complexity is hard for journalists. I mean, I, I, every day I, I sit down and I try to write in a 60 character headline <laughs> what this story is about. and. Uh, it's it's very difficult to put all the maize and mites and and the, the 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 little bits in there. It really is hard for journalists who many of whom are really are trying hard not to get this wrong, but but it's it's complex stuff, particularly for someone who doesn't cover it all the time, and and the jargon around it doesn't help us at all. You know, I, I, you wouldn't believe the number of things I get across the desk every day that talk about the um, you know the consultative <laughs> stakeholder discussion on capacity building of something or other. And, you know, we just, <laughs> we, we, we uh, If you rule the world, would you ban all those phrases? Absolutely. <laughs> I, I try my best to ban them. I, I, I don't allow a stakeholder and people just can't believe it that, <laughs> that I would do that kind of thing. But, you know, it's organizations that care about this issue, you know, that's what mm. it is. Mm. And um, I, I would argue that for, for researchers, if you want to get this message across in the right way, um, try, tr try talking about what you're doing or your story maybe to your grandmother on the phone and watch the words that you use because you doubt you're going to use capacity building or stakeholder or any of these kind of things. Um, tr try to explain it. Have a person in mind when you're writing up the thing that you want to go to the general public. Um, I, I always have one myself that I, that I think of, and it, you know, if that person can't understand what you're talking about, then you need to simplify, because somebody is going to simplify that, and it sure would be a lot better if it's you simplifying it, someone who really understands it, than if you leave it to me, because <laughs> I've I've got 200 press releases coming across my desk every day that I'm dealing with, and calls from all sorts of people, and I have got a limited amount of time to try to make that right and simple. So it's a huge help. Um, how would, why would you say there's, that there's such an attraction, not just from, well, I suppose it one leads to the other. I mean, we've heard there's an attraction for sort of physical, technical solutions, maybe from a political point of view. 
They're quite appealing journalistically as well. Oh, they fit in headlines beautifully. You know, <laughs> five new dams in Cameroon. That fits in <laughs> 60 characters. And, and, and in truth, the, uh, you know, it's just easier for everyone to understand because it's a, it's a finite kind of thing. When, when you're talking about politics and, and success in trying to negotiate some kind of very complicated political structures, you know, that it's incredibly important and, and very, very difficult to talk about succinctly and to turn into a one sentence or two sentence <coughs> start of a story and explain. Um, so we, we have to find better ways to do that. I think one of the problems journalists face too is in that big batch of, of press releases and things that come through, you know, 98% of those are, are about these technical things that, that so-and-so has put so many million dollars toward the creation of a, of a dam, of drip irrigation systems, of something or other. You know, th th there's just piles of these things. There's, there's a huge, particularly uh, I would say in agriculture and energy, there are big agencies out there that every single day tell me about what technical solution they've found. Wheat, you know, light resistant wheat, wow. It is the answer, you know, that, that uh, um, this new system of storing water is, is the answer. And, and they, they are, they're, fan they're all fantastic things, but they, they're not the whole picture. And th there there's so many of those things being promoted that it can distract a journalist's attention, I think, away from these other issues that are not brought to their attention as much, but are really important. But Journalism, as, as you and I well know, without wishing to turn this into sort of journalist anonymous meeting, is, is, <laughs> is, is frequently about you know milestones and pegs, isn't it? That's where you can go mm -hmm. to your editor and say this is important because, uh, and those are often much more clearly identifiable in the sort of technical physical sphere than they are in the political sphere, aren't they? Because it might just be you know, what what has actually been happened here in the political sphere. In what stage is the breakthrough? It's quite difficult to s sell that, isn't it, as a moment? Yeah, that's you know news is. News is something new and interesting, basically, and and uh, it's it, it's easier to wrap up that that physical change or that that physical adaptation in in that kind of a package than to try to explain, you know, in the headline and in the story that um, political strife in you know country X may be underlying, uh, you know, this situation that. Uh, th that's true, and it's right, and we need to write it more. But you can see why it, it's it's more difficult, and it's it's challenging to to get it right. We can use a lot of maze and mites, and I try at our publication to really do that a lot, and and not um, use the hard words like Nicholas Stern did w that you're not sure about. But I think that m my publication is specialist around climate issues, and I deal with them every day. And not everyone is lucky enough to do that. Some of the big publications that are dealing with a really wide range of issues don't understand. As, as we said, these, these climate stories cross every boundary. We have silos in journalism, you know, there's an economics reporter, there's a, 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 a conflict reporter maybe, there's a different political reporters, a different all environment, and they won't all understand in the same way. Um, not all of them have a full picture in the same way that an adaptation person and a conflict person will understand. I want to open this up to the floor, but there was just a, a key phrase you used earlier by which you think um, that describes the importance of, of climate change in this area. Y yeah, I was telling uh, Tom that, that I think that a good way to explain to people that don't understand about whether climate change is the cause of things. Uh, uh, we talk about threat multiplier, but that's one of those, those jargon phrases. I think if you talk about just turning up the volume, for me that, that's useful. Because whatever is already there in, in, in a situation, you know, maybe that's political strife of various kinds, maybe that's environmental issues that are causing problems, lack of resources. You bring in climate change and it just magnifies each one of those things. And that, that is what's driving the, the problem. It's not any one of those and it's not climate change. It's everything taken together that's being aggravated by these, this new climate change situation. So I think as a journalist, I'm always trying to find simpler ways to explain this stuff. And turn up the volume is kind of something that does fit into a headline or into the lead of a story or s so on. Help us to find these phrases that can, can explain this simply to an audience. Thank you very much. Well, I want to uh, throw this open to the floor. So if you want to um, put your hand up, we'll get a microphone to you. If there's uh, yes, lady here. I'm not sure who's got them. Is there a... 